We thank God for his wonderful blessings. We thank the Lord for this celebration that we have. And so we'll begin this morning again by reading just a little bit of the scriptures that we have. Now upon the first day of the week, Luke 24, 1 says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And they were afraid and bowed themselves to the earth, and said, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down he beheld the linen cloths laying by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was to come to pass. Let's go again to the Lord in prayer. Father, we ask you to bless the reading of your word. We thank you, Father, that you have given it to us with the understanding that it is not the preacher who preaches nor is it the methods that are, are performed, but it is you who does the work. And we pray, Father, that you may do the work and bring into each of our hearts the remembrance of what you said and what you did and what you did especially for us in dying on the cross and, was, and rose again to give us everlasting life. We thank you for your grace and mercy and bless this time that we have together for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now generally, at Easter time, we focus our attention on the resurrection of Jesus. And that's just exactly what we should do. Uh, in fact, you know, every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The uh, Jews, they worship and rest on the Sabbath day, which is on Saturday in our uh, our week. But the first day of the week, which we call Sunday, is a celebration by Christians early on of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of them, because of their situation, because they were slaves uh, and would have to work every day of the week, they would go and gather together long before the sun came up. And they would worship and praise the Lord and uh, serve Him in their worship on Sunday, praising His resurrection. But often we leave out a very important part of the story. We leave out those that experienced it personally. You know, there were eyewitnesses of those things that took place of the resurrection. They were the committed followers of Jesus. They believed that He was, was the promised Messiah, but they were expecting Jesus to conquer the Romans and establish the earthly kingdom and rule over the Jewish nation and over all the world. But all their hopes came to a screeching halt when Jesus died on, on the cross. Every one of them thought that it was over. Even Peter his closest friend and disciple thought, it's done, it's over with. If you struggle with doubt about the resurrection, what you need to know is they struggled too. It was, this was not something that they readily accepted. I think you will find comfort in your own hearts by realizing they had a struggle as well. So we're going to examine a few of them, and, and just look at them. Not many. Let's look at those who first saw them. First ones that we will look at is the women. On that first day of the week, 
after the Sabbath was over, and they came uh, at the dawning of the sun, they came to the uh, grave site that they knew where it was at because they saw Jesus laid there. They came 2,000 years ago on that Sunday morning to that tomb, and they didn't come expecting to see a mir- the miracle of the resurrection. Although Jesus was not silent in proclaiming it, they uh, were expecting to find His bodies in the tomb, the beginning of decay, and with the hope that they could in some way, in their tender care, prepare His body for His eternal rest. And we all tend to do that. We, you know, uh, I've uh, been at the side of those who've had to make arrangements for their loved ones and uh, all sorts of things that they go through. And um, many times because their heart is so uh, tender at that moment, they're taken advantage of and uh, spend more money than is needed uh, just because they, they want to give the best to that loved one who has passed away. These women were like that. These women were faithful to Jesus. They had followed Him from Galilee. And another passage of Scripture, they were giving out of their own income to support the, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus and His disciples in their ministry. And so they were very faithful. Even when the eleven disciples deserted Jesus, the women followed Him to the cross. They watched the whole scene. They watched His, his uh, being nailed to the cross. They watched Him being insulted by, at first by even the others that were hung on the two crosses next to Him. They saw all these things. They were faithful about being there. And when uh, he, he died, uh, they watched Him die. They saw Him die on the cross and make that final statement, It is finished. And He gave up the ghost said, Father, into Thy hands I commend My Spirit. And He gave up the ghost. They saw that. They saw the soldier when he walked by and they were breaking the legs of the other two to hasten their death and saying that Jesus was already dead to make sure that it was so. He stabbed Jesus in the side with that Roman spear that was so big that Thomas said he could put his hand into it. This was not a small wound. And the water and the blood gushed out. They were witnesses when Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took Jesus' lifeless body down from the cross. They followed them to the tomb and saw them place Jesus' body there. They were not unaware of where Jesus was. And at this time of year, this is one of the things, oh, the women went to the wrong tomb in their sadness and their sorrow, they all forgot where He was buried. No, that wasn't true. They knew exactly where He was buried. They watched Him being placed there. They saw Joseph and, and uh, uh, Nicodemus close the tomb with a great stone across its mouth just to shut Him, shut him in, which was the custom of the Jews at that time. They were witnesses that Jesus was actually dead. It's one of those things that we have to make perfectly clear. He didn't swoon. He didn't faint. He didn't, wasn't revived in the coolness of the tomb. Jesus was dead. The Roman soldiers knew it. Nicodemus and, and Joseph of Arimathea knew it. And so did these women. Their arrival at the tomb after the Sabbath was not to see a miracle. It was to finish the burial preparations of Jesus' body. And we could be very critical, but we shouldn't be. We should not criticize these women because they thought Jesus was dead. Because if we had been there at that time, we would have concluded... Jesus was dead too. And that's exactly what He was. 
What faith would we have if we had seen Jesus die and witnessed His lifeless corpse being taken down from the cross and placed into the grave? What kind of faith would we have? Well, I tell you what, I think we would uh, have been as unprepared as they were when it came to the tomb, when they came to the tomb and, and uh, to their, their last act of compassion for their master. And I'm sure it was a job that they didn't want to do. And in most cultures, it was a job that was left to the women to do. It was not something that the men would take care of. It was the women of the family who would take care of the body of their dead. The Bible says when they arrived at the tomb, Luke says, they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. The stone was rolled away. In another passage of Scripture, when they found that the body was not there, uh, Mary Magdalene assumed that someone had taken the body, which is the very thing that the Jews promoted, that the body was stolen by the disciples and buried somewhere else. And that is so ridiculous, it's, it's unworthy of even mentioning. But they knew that His body was there. They knew that's where He was supposed to be. And that stone was there. We know from uh, uh, another passage of Scripture that uh, there was a Roman guard there. And so who took care of the guards? Well, it wasn't uh, the uh, faithless and fearful uh, disciples because they didn't even consider that Jesus might be alive or even think of taking His body. Besides that, every one of them died attesting that Jesus was alive. He was alive. Still, these women were not looking to find Jesus alive. The tomb is open, but the body's not there. And those angels were inside the tomb, told them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how He spake unto you when He was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Now after this had happened, and they had the the vision of the angels, Mary Magdalene went back to tell the apostles, but uh, she supposed that someone had removed the body. And that's what she told him. He says, they've taken the body of Jesus away. And returning to the tomb, she still didn't believe that Jesus had risen from the the dead until He revealed Himself to her. The Bible tells us in John chapter 20, verses 15 and 16, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing Him to be the gardener, said unto Him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Finally she believed. Why? She believed because she saw. She saw Jesus there risen from the dead. And I believe that is the key to faith in Christ and belief in His resurrection. Jesus must reveal Himself to us just as He revealed Himself to Mary. Jesus said, No man can come to Me except the Father which hath sent Me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. John chapter 6, verse 44. That's a very important piece of Scripture. It's important for us who are believers because, it's it, one, it says that God was working to bring us to Jesus before we ever thought about it. And number two, it means that God has to work in the heart of every lost person, every person far from God, to draw them to Jesus. And when He draws them to Jesus, they will put their faith in Jesus Christ. God the Father must draw you to Jesus in order for you to trust in Him and to believe in His resurrection. 
there were others that struggled with the resurrection of Jesus. Several others. There are some who today that, that have done that. Basically, all of the apostles were skeptical at first. There was not a one of them that believed that Jesus was risen from the dead. Even when it was told them by eyewitnesses, they doubted it. Even though Jesus had repeatedly told them that He was going to be crucified and the third day that He would rise again, they didn't believe. They had heard and they had heard and they had heard and as we said in the past week or so, that they had heard increasingly that Jesus was going to die on the cross and that He was going to rise the third day. But they didn't believe. Peter didn't even believe when he came to the empty tomb and saw the empty burial wrappings, he still didn't believe. It was not possible for him to believe on his own. The Bible says Peter ran to, into the sepulcher and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed wondering, notice this, wondering in himself at that which was, co to, which was to come which was come to pass. He didn't know what had happened. What's going on here? The body is gone. The, the burial claws are there. Another passage says that, that it, it was like in the Greek, this, the idea is the wrappings around his body was as though he had passed through the burial clothes, but the head wrapping was folded gently and laid over by itself as though somebody just took the time to fold it up and set it there. Well, who did that? Well, Jesus did it when He arose from the dead. And it's another reason for Him to believe, but He didn't believe. Later, He too encountered the risen Christ, and He finally believed. Finally, after seeing Him, we are told that He was among those first ones to see Jesus risen from the dead. But he had to see to believe. Then there were the two that encountered Jesus on the road to Emmaus. As they walked, the Bible says, uh, their heart burned within them as he opened to them the Scriptures. And yet looking at him, they didn't recognize him. There they went and invited him to their own home. They, they ate with him. And in the breaking of bread, they recognized him. And when they recognized him, he vanished out of their sight. And yet they believed. And they went back and told the apostles that they had seen the risen Savior. But again, it was the personal encounter with the risen Jesus that convinced them. That convinced them. Then there was Thomas. We all know doubting Thomas, don't we? Don't we know him? You know, we, we really run him down. But folks, we're just as bad. But Thomas, he was a bold in his proclamation. He said, except I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now you talk about somebody who was determined not to believe. He wasn't going to be fooled. He wanted to have reality shown to him. And yet, it was only when Jesus personally revealed Himself that Thomas would proclaim, My Lord and my God. Do you believe that Jesus is alive? You know, if you do, then it ought to change your life. If Jesus is alive, He is Lord of lords and King of kings. He has conquered death and hell and the grave. He is the one that we should obey and follow. Jesus made a wonderful statement to Thomas. That is an encouragement for all of us. He, just these words. He said, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas had to see to believe. But so did Peter, and so did James, and so did John, and so did all the other apostles. They all had seen Him, only Thomas hadn't seen Him yet. 
Blessed are they which have not seen and yet believe. Have you seen Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is alive? Celebrate it with your life. Dedicate your life to serving Jesus, your living Lord. Now I've got to speak to those who may not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I've got to speak to you. If you're doubting and you're wondering, I can point you to several books that uh, uh, will give you answers uh, logically about whether Jesus is alive or not. But until you encounter Him in a very personal way, you will never really believe. You may give head assent that Jesus is alive, but your heart is not committed to Him. You've never given over to the full realization that Jesus is alive and that you must put your trust in Him. I pray that God will draw you to Jesus and reveal His Son to you. I know my own self. The scripture that Paul uses when he says, I know whom I believe and am persuaded he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. The first part of that, I know whom I have believed. I, Jesus is not a stranger to me. He's my personal friend. He's been my friend ever since I was 12 years old. And though I've gone through many times of doubt and have struggled with through many different circumstances, I know whom I have believed. And I know that He is risen from the dead. And I know that He will raise me one day because I have put my trust in Him. And I pray that you will not be faithless as Thomas was, but believing in the living Jesus Christ, your Lord, you may know that Jesus is alive and that He is the Lord of your life. The Bible makes it very clear that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There is no one else to save you. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only way according to His own words. And I know He's the only way because I have put my faith in Him myself. And I encourage you to put your faith in Him. God loved you so much that He sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. By His stripes and by the shedding of His blood, your sins can be forgiven. Because you have sinned very wickedly before God the Father. And you need to repent toward Him. But the Bible says that the total message of salvation is not just repentance, but repentance and belief. Repent toward God the Father and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I encourage you to do this day. And I pray God will do it in your life. Now, this is a wonderful day. And salvation has been granted to those of us who have put our faith and trust in Him. And we need to sing and glorify the name of the Lord. So let's sing together our closing hymn before we have prayer. And sing to God be the glory.